Now, one of the things I see a lot of on social media is gas engineers asking other gas engineers, how do we categorise this unsafe situation? Is it ID? Is it at risk? Do we redor it? Does not to current standards still exist? Well, hopefully in this video, we're going to get rid of some of these misconceptions on how to categorise unsafe situations. Let's get on with it. Now, as we go through this video, I'm going to be testing your knowledge and see if you are correct with these unsafe situations. Now, the first one we've got is you're called to service this boiler. And this is what you find when you inspect the flue on the outside. Now you open the window, you turn the appliance on full and you do your sweep test around your window for two minutes and you've got no CO coming into the room at all. And then you do your sweep test on the appliance on low rate and you still get no products of combustion coming into the room. So what are you going to classify this as? Is it ID? Is it at risk? Or is it not to current standards? So, how many of you said it was at risk then? Well, you'd be wrong, because it's actually not to current standards, because you haven't got more than 10 parts per million CO coming into the room. But if you did have more than 10 parts per million of CO coming into the room, then that would be immediately dangerous. Anyway, hope you got it right, and I'll try you with some more later on in the film. Now, you wouldn't really think that engineers would have misconceptions over unsafe situations when we have this document. So this document is IGEM G11 Unsafe Situations Procedure for dealing with unsafe situations in gas. And this document came out first in 2018 when IGEM took back the unsafe situations from GasSafe. IGEM, by the way, is the Institute of Gas Engineers and Managers. So they write the unsafe situations procedure. And in 2021, it was revised to edition 2, communication 1840. Now, this document is free to download from IGEM's website. And every gas engineer should be carrying this booklet. So why are we going on social media and asking how do we categorise unsafe situations when we've got this? Anyway, shall we look at a few things from this booklet and hopefully we can clear up some of these misconceptions and sort out our unsafe situations procedure. The priority for gas engineers when they're encountering an unsafe situation is to safeguard life and property. It is essential that gas engineers are able to identify gas appliances and gas pipework that are a potential danger to this life and property. And they are able to take prompt, corrective action to eliminate such dangers. So that's what the unsafe situations procedure IGMG11 says about gas engineers dealing with unsafe situations. We've got to be able to identify these faults and be able to act on them promptly. Correctly though. So, not making up your own regulations, guys. Now, you're doing a landlord report, and while you're doing your visual inspection of your gas meter, this is what you find. So you find the gas meter box is actually broken, and because it's a semi-concealed meter box in the ground, it's allowing water into where the meter is. When you carry out a tightness test, your tightness test passes and you've no leaks. What are you going to classify this broken meter box as then? Is it going to be at risk? Is it going to be ID? Or is it going to be not to current standards? Well, if you said it was ID, you'd be completely wrong. It's at risk. So broken, damaged or missing meter box round a gas meter is actually classed as at risk. Well, did you get that one right? Are you two for two? Or have you got them all wrong? Anyway, we'll try some more later. Now the first misconception we need to clear up is about not to current standards. Now, not to current standards does not exist in IGM G11 because it's not to current standards. It's not an unsafe situation. But you still may find things out there which are not to current standards, which you might think you need to 
notify to a responsible person. So not to current standards has been removed from iGEMG 11, but we can still use it. It's not gone away. So that's the first misconception. Not to current standards technically still exists, but doesn't exist in iGEMG 11. So we don't need to do a warning notice for it basically, because it isn't a danger. But if you're doing a landlord report or you're doing any servicing and you find some minor faults which aren't a danger to life and property, then we could just note it down on our paperwork. Now one of the things they do say about paperwork guys is you need to keep it for six years just in case somebody doesn't take some uh, court action against you. So make sure you write everything down and you keep it for at least six years. Now just remember though guys when installing a gas appliance, you must install it to the current standards. You can't go putting a flue less than 300 mil away from a window and then just say, oh, it's all right, it's not to current standards because we haven't got 10 parts per million of CO coming into the room. No, 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 you can't do that. You have to install the appliances to the current standards. Or you can still get in trouble, even though you think it's not to current standards. And the final misconception on not to current standards is now not to current standards have all been bumped up to at risk. They haven't, but a couple have. But anyway, we'll have a look at those later. Now, next scenario, you've been asked to service this flueless water heater. On your visual inspection, you found out the room did not require ventilation because it was large enough and to comply with the building regs, it had an openable window. But what is missing besides the control knob? Well, if you said the maximum runtime of five minute warning label is missing, then you'd be correct. So flueless water heaters need a sticker on there or a warning label to tell operators that the maximum runtime for this appliance is five minutes. This is actually one of the scenarios which was bumped up from not to current standards to at risk. So if a flueless water heater does not have a maximum runtime sticker on it, then that will be classified as at risk. Now let's talk about a few things what we would be classifying straight away as immediately dangerous to life and property without even thinking about it. Well, first one, gas leaks. So if you do a tightness test and it drops and you can smell gas and the customer's complaining about smelling gas, then it's an immediate danger to life and property. So gas leaks, immediately dangerous. Products of combustion entering the room. So more than 10 parts per million CO coming into the room from an appliance is immediate danger. Inappropriate fittings used on a gas supply. Plastic push fit pipe or a plastic push fit fitting on a Gas supply is immediate danger. So appliances failing, flu flow tests and spillage tests are immediate danger. So technically something that is spilling products of combustion, spilling gas, inappropriate fittings, safety devices being made inoperative. These are all things that are an immediate danger to life and property and what we need to be acting on in a prompt way. So, let's have a look and see how we actually do act on immediately dangerous situations. Now, the procedure for dealing with this ID situation is... With the customer's agreement, attempt to rectify the situation. Where this is not possible, explain to the customer that the appliance has to be disconnected from the gas supply until the fault is rectified. Attach a danger do not use notice to the appliance. Complete a warning notice and ask the customer to sign it as a record of receipt. With the customer's permission, disconnect and seal the appliance from the installation using appropriate fittings. If the customer does not allow this, you must turn off the appliance and make immediate contact with the emergency contact centre Caden in the Northwest, explain the situation and obtain a job reference number, making a note of the time you called and who you spoke to. That's the procedure for dealing with ID. Now on this one, you've been asked to go and service 
this logic boiler. You do a tightness test and it's passed its tightness test. And then when you inspect underneath the boiler, this is what you find. So you can see the pipe work has got flexible hoses going to it all, which are all water fittings, including the gas pipe. But it's passed the tightness test. So how are you going to categorise this then? Is it at risk? ID? Not to current standards. And do you need to rid or it or not? Anyway, if you said it's ID and rid or, you would definitely be correct on this one. Let's have a look at at risk then. Now remember, at risk means it's at risk of becoming immediately dangerous. So if you go out to a job and you think, ooh, that could be leaking gas and you do a tightness test and it isn't leaking gas, then it's at risk of becoming immediately dangerous. You look at a boil and you think, that flue looks a bit dodgy. And it's not putting products of combustion into the room, but it looks like it could do at any time, then that's at risk of becoming immediately dangerous. So first of all, that's what at risk is. It's at risk of becoming immediately dangerous. Examples are unsupported flu systems. So if you've used strap banding and not the manufacturer's clips for holding up a flu, then that's at risk. Now a gas pipe not sleeved going through a wall is not to current standards. But if it's got signs of damage or corrosion and it's not leaking gas into the room, then that's at risk. But obviously if it is leaking gas, then it becomes ID. Now this one gets a lot of people. Uh, ECV letting by without the smell of gas. It's not immediately dangerous, it's at risk. But obviously if there is a smell of gas, then there's a gas leak so it's immediately dangerous. Open fluid or flueless gas appliances without any purpose provided ventilation. That's at risk. But obviously if we've got incomplete combustion or failure of uh, flue flow test and spillage, then that makes the appliance ID. So things like fly screens, closable vents, missing vents, incorrectly located vents, these are all at risk but obviously if the appliance is spilling products of combustion fails flue gas analyzer readings if it's a flueless appliance that makes it id if it's a fluid appliance and it fails its flue gas analyzer readings that isn't id that's at risk because obviously the products of combustion are going outside so they don't make a danger to life and property unless that flu system is leaking more than 10 parts per million of CO into the rooms. So they are a few of the at-risk situations. Let's go and have a look at the procedure. With the customer's agreement, attempt to rectify the situation. Where this is not possible, explain to the customer that the appliance should not be used and that continue to use the appliance would be at the customer's risk and may contravene the regulations. Attach a danger do not use notice to the appliance and complete a warning notice and ask the customer to sign it as record of receipt. With the customer's permission, turn off the appliance. If the permission to turn off is refused, the customer's attention should be brought to the fact that there may be an offence to continue to use the appliance. If the customer refuses to sign the warning notice, it is recommended that it be recorded on said warning notice. That's the procedure for at risk. Now you are called to do a service on this gas fire. While you're servicing the gas fire, you actually find there is a damper plate. But the damper plate is not fixed in the open position. After speaking to the customers, the customer knows that they can't run the fire with the damper plate in the closed position. And there is also no signs of spillage. So how would you categorize this? Would you ID it? Would you at risk it? Is it not to current standards? And do we need to rid or it? Well, 
If you said it's at risk, then you'd be correct. Now you can see the major difference now with dealing with an at risk situation and an ID. So on an ID situation, if you find it, you turn off the gas supply and disconnect it from the gas supply. We're using appropriate gas fittings. If it's an at risk situation, you just isolate the gas supply. But obviously if you explain to the customer that it's dangerous and do they want them to disconnect it from the gas supply, then by all means you can do. But if they just say, no, turn it off, that's all you can do. Also in an at risk situation, if the customer goes, not a chance of you turning off my gas appliance. It's been like that for 30 years and it's not done me any harm now. What do you do in that situation? Well, you just fill in your paperwork, stick on your sticker and write that the customer refuses for you to turn off the gas supply and deal with the at risk situation and you jog on. Now if it's an ID situation and the customer says not a chance it's been like that for 30 years and you see it's an immediate danger to life and property then it has to be disconnected from the gas supply and if the customer refuses you to do it then you ring Caden and you hang around outside waiting for Caden so you can explain to the Caden engineer or the emergency service provider engineer where you are in the country and you explain to them what you've found and that the customer won't let you deal with it. And they'll go in and they'll isolate at the gas meter and then the customer won't have gas anyway. But the main thing is communicate with your customer, explain to them what the situation is and 99.999% of the time the customer will allow you to deal with that situation. So that's the major difference between the two. Shall we look at Ridor then? Now before we look at this Ridor, you get called to this property where a builder has asked you to move the boiler. When you get there, the boiler is running and the builder has told the customer to leave the two Velux windows open while they've got the boiler running, but to close them at night time when the boiler isn't running. So how would you categorise this then? Is it at risk? Is it ID? And do we have to rid all the builder? Well, if you said it's not to current standards, you shouldn't be in the gas industry. <laughs> this is an actual ID situation and the builder should be rid and probably including the customer for using an appliance enclosed within a property. Hopefully you got that one. Now, there is a requirement under RIDOR, the reporting of injuries, diseases and dangerous occurrence regulations, 2013. Now, under RIDOR, there are two sections what we need to report under being gas engineers. And they are 11.2 under RIDOR and 11.1. Now, RIDOR section 11, paragraph 1, normal gas engineers wouldn't normally get involved with this. So this is the first engineer who is called on scene after somebody has been taken to hospital um, because of carbon monoxide poisoning, because of an explosion of gas or because of leaking of gas or products of combustion. So under 11 paragraph 1 that is normally reported by Cadent normally and they would report it to the HSC and Gas Safe would be involved with it. But Ridor section 11 paragraph 2 is where gas registered businesses would get involved with Ridor reporting. So this is where you've gone into a property uh, to do landlord reports, servicing or installation and you find things like flues, uh, ventilation, gas fittings which are a danger to life and property and which could cause somebody to go to hospital because of carbon monoxide poisoning, because of leakage of gas, because of an explosion of gas, then that's what we would be reporting under RIDOR. So let's have a look at this RIDOR section 11 paragraph 2 and see exactly what we need to do. 
Rideau Regulation 11, paragraph 2, requires registered gas businesses or engineers to report any gas fitting, including appliances and flues or ventilation used with appliances, which are a danger to such an extent that they have caused or are likely to cause death, loss of consciousness, or taken to hospital of a person due to the design, construction, manner of installation, modification, or incorrect servicing of a gas fitting that could or has resulted in an accident of leakage of gas, incomplete combustion of gas, or inadequate removal of products of combustion of gas, this is commonly referred to as poor workmanship or design. A flowchart of the process is contained in Appendix 7. Note number 1. Where an engineer finds a dangerous gas fitting and repairs it at the same time, there is still a requirement for this to be reported. And finally, note 2 basically says you can find more guidance on RIDO reporting from Technical Bulletin 002 from GasSafe. Now let's finish off with this scenario. So you're called to install a gas boiler. So you decide you're going to do a tightness test. So, on inspection of the gas meter, this is what you find. So you can see we've got corrosion on the anaconda. We've got severe corrosion on the gas meter. And we've also got corrosion on the pipework. So when you carry out a tightness test, it passes the tightness test procedure. So, what are you going to categorise this installation as? Is it at risk? Is it ID? Or is it Ridoring? Anyway, because it passed the tightness test, this would be classed as an at risk situation. Is there any other faults you can see on this? Well, if you said there's no tamper seals on the bracket to stop the customer removing the gas meter, then you're a very, very observant gas engineer. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you on the next one. Cheers.